Welcome back to R Programming 101. Let's talk about ggplot once again. And there's so much to learn within ggplot. I'm actually going to try and make a lot of a lot of short little videos, just kind of dealing with one little issue at a time. A lovely data set, which is built into R, so you're going to have access to this data set and you can practice everything I'm doing at home. A lovely data set is the M Sleep data set. And the reason why I like it a lot, it has got a nice variety of types of different variables, right? It's got categorical variables and numeric variables. And you can look at creating plots with a single numeric or a single categorical variable or two categorical variables or two numerics or a combination of categorical and numeric variables and we're going to get into all of that so this is a great data set to use to practice doing your, your data visualization because you get to play with the different combinations of variables so let's jump right in and have a look at what we've got if you want to learn about R programming, then you have come to the right place. On this YouTube channel, we're creating R programming videos on everything. Okay, first of all, and I say this at the beginning of each video, start off, we're working in the tidyverse. If you don't know what that means, I've got a video on that. Go and watch my YouTube channel. You'll learn about it. If you install tidyverse and then you call the package by using the, the function library tidyverse, it installs a number of packages, one of which is ggplot. At the beginning of all my code, I start off with library tidyverse, right? We've got ggplot. There's two things that we get. We get ggplot. I mean, we get a whole lot of packages, but we get ggplot, but we also get built into the tidyverse is the ability to use pipe operators. And I'm going to show you a little bit about that today. Very exciting stuff. Okay, so we've got the tidyverse installed, not getting into that today. We've got built in data sets in R. If we type data, open and close brackets, and we can see all of the data sets that are built in that you can practice with. They are really nice. One of them is msleep. Uh, if you want to know more about msleep, you push question mark msleep and that will give you information about it and it'll tell you about all of the different variables in msleep. Sorry, here we are. So we've got msleep. Now, if we just want to have a quick look at that, as I was saying, we've got multiple different kinds of variables. We've got numeric and categorical variables so we can do all sorts of inter interesting things in the data visualization. I'm going to, in this video, look at a single categorical. Okay, and just to remind you, a categorical variable is a variable where you can put each row into one or other bucket, right? So it could be gender, males and females. It could be eye color, blue, green, brown. Each observation, each row can be stuck into one of the buckets and then we want to be able to visualize that. And then we're going to look at a single uh, numeric variable, right? And numeric variable is something that lands on the number line. It can be one, two, three, four, you know, three and a half, four, five, six, seven, or whatever. And we plot these things differently. Now, interestingly, when you plot a single categorical variable, you get a bar chart. And when you plot a single numeric variable, you get a histogram, and these things look kind of the same, and people often get them confused. So we're going to have a look at that today, and it'll be very, very straightforward, and you'll understand this perfectly when we're finished. We're also going to look at some of the interesting, some of the little nuances of code, and you're going to learn a lot. So this is a lot of fun. Don't go away. Stick with me. So we've said, we've looked at the, at the data. As always, we can do names, m, sleep, and that's going to give us a list of all of the variables that are in this particular data set. Oh, I've got that over there. We'll just delete that. Okay, we're going to be talking about, first of all, a single categorical variable. Now, when you do ggplot, I've, I always say this, you can type in ggplot and then put in the data set that you're working with. I always pipe it in. So I start with the data frame and then I pipe it into various lines of code and then pipe that into ggplot. See the data, the output of one chunk of code gets piped in as the first argument in the next. So you, you get this object getting passed along the pipe. It's, it's actually, once you get your head around it, it's really, really an, an exciting uh, innovation in data manipulation and, and visualization. So we start off with N sleep. Now we've piped it in here and I've said drop NA and VORS. Now VORS, just to let you know, VORS is like, what do these animals eat? Herbivores, carnivores, insectivores. These are the categories that each of the animals, each of the rows, each of the observations can be put into. There are missing values in, in that data. Let me just run all of this code so you can see that exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so when I run this, this particular chunk of data, here we have, it's a single numeric variable. In other words, we're just looking at VORs. We're just looking at what these animals eat, right? So th that's the only variable we're looking at at the moment. And when we do that, we get carnivores here, herbivores, insectivores, and omnivores. We don't see any column for missing values, but if, if I put a little hashtag in front of that, and if you put a hashtag in front of any line of code, 
the code will run and, it, and it'll ignore that particular line. So if we rerun this line of code with that hashtag in there, voila, look at this. There's a little column that says NA. That means not available, missing data. I'll remove the hashtag. I've said drop NA and then I've been very specific. I've said just drop the NA from BORS. In other words, R is looking at this data frame. It's looking at this variable right here, VORS, and where it sees an NA here in this particular column, it will exclude that row of data. If I had just said drop NA and I'd left out the word VORS, and you see this very often in coding, there's just this, the way people deal with missing data is they just say, remove all of the missing data, and they think that they've solved some sort of problem. Well, you haven't solved the problem, you've created one. Because you'll notice, look at the numbers that we got here. Herbivores, just over 30. If we drop all of the missing values, look at this, our herbivores, there's less than 10, there's about 10. So, you know, you might feel as if, oh, this is a nice graph representing my data. It's not representing your data. You've excluded too much, you've excluded too many rows because R has looked at every single row. And if there's an NA anywhere against any of the variables, that entire row goes gets removed. And so we've removed too much data inadvertently. So you wanna be quite specific, you wanna be quite surgical. And you wanna say, we are just going to remove missing values from VORS. And then we're gonna pipe that into our GT slot. Can you see why there's a real advantage in using these pipe operators and piping your data into the ggplot so that you can manipulate it on its way in. You can put a filter there, you can remove NAs, you could, you, there's all sorts of things you could do to your data before you even start visualizing it. And then once you're visualizing it, if you wanna make a change to how much data is being looked at, or you just go back up the code and you, and you can do that change and it's very, very straightforward. And you're doing this without having to create too many objects. You know, it's, it's a lovely way to do graphics. Okay, right, let's keep going. So we've said drop NA, drop all the missing values from VORS. We've piped it into ggplot. We don't need to say ggplot open brackets data equals VORS. It's assumed because we've piped it in. We can go straight into the mapping. Now we're just dealing with one variable. So we can say X is equal to VORS. That's the X axis is going to be looking at the VORS. We don't even really need to say X equals if we just, if we just sort of said VORS. R would assume that we're talking about the x the x axis, right? Uh, because the first argument after aesthetics is always it's, R always assumes you're looking at the x at the x axis in terms of that aesthetic. Next, we say uh, GM bar, and here I've said fill is equal to, and you see this number, and you sort of think, well, what have you done there? Because I could have written the word blue, for example, it would have done blue. I've got something a little bit more nuanced. This is kind of a an interesting shade of blue. How did I get to that? Well. And I've, and, and, and I've got this funny number, where did that come from? Okay, if you go online and there are loads of these sites, this is htmlcolorcodes.com, but there's loads and loads of these kinds of sites. Here, you can, you can choose anything and it will tell you what the hex code is over there. And you simply cut and paste that into your R code as color and it'll make, it'll use that color right there, okay? So there's lot, you can just do, you know, you can do a Google search for it or you can use this particular site. And then in this case, I've chosen that color there, which, you know, I don't, I don't even know what this color would be called, but I kind of like it. So GM bar, it's, that's, that's, so we started off with the data set. We then define the aesthetics, the position, the shape, the color, the size, the transparency, et cetera, et cetera. In this case, there's only one aesthetic where we are describing and that is which variable, in this case, fours, is plotted against the X axis. Right, so we've done data, aesthetic, and then the final thing, the big three when it comes to the grammar of graphics are the geometries, and we've said geom bar. And a bar, a bar chart is the best chart for a single categorical variable. Why? Because we're counting. We wanna know within each of these categories, how many of the rows or how many of the observations were assigned to that particular category. So of our whole data set, how many were carnivores, how many were herbivores, how many were insectivores, and how many were omnivores? How many? Count, count, count. Let's draw a bar chart that shows us the relative number of, of each of these categories. And you can see it's done that right there. It's moved, it's removed all the missing missing data, which is great. I've shaded out here using the hashtag, the coord flip line. And I'm just gonna undo that for a second. I'm gonna put that back in play just to show you what you can do. If I run the code with the coord flip 
line in place. It flips the coordinates. In other words, the x the x axis is now on is going vertically and the y axis is horizontal. The reason why that is useful is sometimes well, there's a couple of reasons. If you've got lots and lots and lots and lots of categories. In this case, we've got Omnibor, we've got four. But what if this was 20 or 30 or 50? It's much easier then to have those 50 listed on the, on the vertical axis than having 50 things kind of squished together along, along the horizontal axis. It's much neater. It's much easier. So you just decide, depending on the data that you've got, if there are a lot of categories, it's worth doing the cohort flip. If you've just got four categories, in this case, there's just four, it's actually absolutely fine just to leave that out and, and to have and, and to have your, your x-axis, which is the default, along the bottom horizontally, right? Then I've said theme black and white, BW, which is black and white. It's kind of quite a nice, neat theme. I like it. Uh, there's just a few that I like. You can control if you, you know, within this theme, there's all sorts of arguments you can put in there and control everything about this canvas. But the default is kind of quite nice and neat. I like it. Labels, I've said X equals Vorge with a capital V, or I could, I could put in here X equals, you know, who eats what? Question mark. I mean, you know, you can put anything there. It'll pop it down there. Y is equal to null because I didn't want there to be any label on the Y axis. Title is equal to number of observations per order. Okay, so that's all quite straightforward. You can put in a GG save and save that onto your hard drive, for example. There's lots more you can do, but that's pretty nice and straightforward and simple. One more thing. Look at this. Look at this. This I'm not going to get into the details here. But if you wanted these in order from smallest to biggest, instead of x axis equals vores, you can put in this code right here. I'm not going to get into a big explanation about that right now because that's not the point of this lesson. You can cut and paste that or you can look at this code and do that at home. But that's sometimes quite nice, especially if you have loads and loads of variables, you can code flip it and it always looks quite good. So that's an interesting thing to do, but we're gonna come back to that kind of thing in future lessons. What I wanna get into now is I want to talk about the fact that this is a categorical variable we're doing bar charts. If we had a numeric variable, we would create a histogram. Now, what variable are we dealing with now? We're talking about awake. Let's just have a look at that variable over here. Awake is a number. It's I think it's the number of hours that each of these a particular, M, M sleep, by the way, is, I think it's mammals and their sleeping pack patterns. We didn't talk about that. This is the number of hours that they're awake. This is a numeric variable. It's a number. So it's not a category, right? And the best way, there's two ways that we usually represent these numbers. Either we might want to create a, a box plot or we would create a histogram. Then there's ways of putting both of those things into one graphic. We're not going to get into that right now. But a histogram is a lovely way of seeing the shape of the data. And what's happening with the histogram is this. It's looking at different bins, right? So let's just go through the code and then I'll talk about this in more detail. So again, we've started with msleep, that's the data set, piping it into ggplot. The aesthetic, in this case, again, we're just dealing with one variable. So we've said aesthetic awake, that may well has, have, that could easily have been x equals awake. That's fine, either is absolutely fine. We don't have a y variable, we're just looking at, we're just trying to plot a single variable so there isn't it's we're not plotting this against that we're just plotting one thing the total sleep right that's that's all we're plotting so we've just got x equals awake nothing else we're not plotting any other aesthetics we're not mapping any of the other variables against different possible aesthetics like shape size transparency etc cetera, etc cetera. just looking at the x variable x axis we've defined the data we've defined the mapping or the aesthetic and then we have to define the geometries, which is, is it a dot plot, bar chart, ba 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 ba. We've said geom histogram, right? Geom histogram is going to draw a histogram. It's great for plotting a single numeric. And then now you could leave all of this out, right? If I cut all of that out, let's remove that and rerun this. And it's drawn a histogram, but okay, the color's yucky, but look at this. This is, all seems a bit messy. It's difficult to know what's going on here. And the reason is, let me stick that code back in. I've said, can we make the bin width equal to two and the fill that color, same color as before? The color doesn't matter because of course, we've talked about the color. What's happening here? What is this bin width? When you draw a histogram, what R is doing is it's saying, look, let's take a bin and let's look for how many of the observations fit into that particular, you know, between 
zero and two. How many observations fit into between zero and two? And it counts those up. Then two to four. How many observations fit into the, that bin? Two to four. Then four to six. How many observations fit within those particular parameters? And it draws this graph depending on how many observations fit into these bins, right? So if we go back up here, if we made the bin width even bigger, if we made it five, you'll see what happens. Look at that, that's much bigger. And if we made it one, which is even smaller, it's much more granular, right? But so in either, either event, you get to see what the shape of this data set is. And that's quite important when you start doing analysis because we very often want to know, is the data normally distributed? In other words, is there, you know, is it kind of even on both sides and it has a, a median and mean that are pretty central and pretty much toward the middle? Or is one side of the graph, you know, is all the data stretched out in one direction? Or, and that matters when you start doing statistical analysis. So the bin width is how big these bins are and that R needs to count the number of observations or rows that would, you know, for whom the value in that particular row for that particular variable, in this case, sleep, fits into that bin. And think of them as buckets and it fills up the buckets, fills up the buckets, and we create this histogram. I hope that makes sense. Then we've got theme black and white as we've talked about before. Labels, we've talked about that before. All of this is pretty much the same. I hope that was useful, right? So. What do we remember here? Categorical variable, we've got categories, we're putting every observation or every row that meets a criteria for a category into that category and we create a bar and we create a bar chart. For numeric variables, we're doing a similar thing, but instead of having a category, we're creating a bin. So we're saying naught, two to four, et cetera, et cetera. And all of the observations or rows that meet that criteria for that particular variable get stuck into that bin. And once again, the number of observations translates into a, a height of a column. And one of the differences between these two kinds of, of graphs is the histogram there typically isn't gaps or lines between them. It's continuous. It goes from one bin straight to the next. Whereas you'll notice in a bar chart, typically there's a gap between them. They're not continuous. These things are discrete. I hope that was useful. I hope that that made sense. I know I went very quickly, but this wasn't a complicated concept. And I think the more you practice doing these graphs, the better you're gonna get at them and the more you're gonna understand uh, when to use what. So get into R, get the M sleep, I mean, you know, you've got to be in the tidyverse, by the way, to use ggplot. Get the msleep data set. Create the graphs that I've done, single numeric, single categoric. In future videos, we're going to look at two numeric, two categorical, and numeric and a categorical, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we're going to draw, and it, we're going to use this data set. This is a great data set to practice with. And we're going to do all sorts of lovely analysis. Thanks for watching. Take care. Don't do drugs. Always do your best. Don't ever change. Speak to you soon. Bye.